Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Excuse me, folks, but it's, yeah, I'm, out of, I'm out of uniform. I normally would have my Vietnam participation cap on. Oh, if not that, my Marine Corps. But at least I got my Marine Corps pendant up here on and, and the U.S. flag. Well, today, folks, we're going we're gonna to have a very interesting show. In fact, this is sort of like a, an outreach kind of a show to folks who had participated in the military, participated in the, uh, in the military, in the uniform, in the uniform, all the branches for that matter. And I'm talking about as a result of the whole issue with the VA and the lack of uh, support in many ways to many of the veterans that are out there. I thought it would be a good idea to spend the hour talking to how do you access the VA and before you access to the VA, why you should be accessing the VA. And so joining me today will be a gentleman that I've known for the last almost about eight years now. And uh, he, he's been a, an advocate, if you will, for actually outreaching to vets. And in fact, that's how he basically outreached to me. Uh, as a business over at Norma's Kitchen, I always, I always donned the, the Marine Corps flag on the on the bulkhead on the outside and my and that's basically another way of outreaching to vets to come in and talk because often vets tend to talk to want, want to talk to vets about some of their issues and whatever so anyway uh the gentleman name here is it's craig craig sean murphy and he normally refers to as craig i always see him and his dog i, mean, I see his dog first before him but anyway but craig welcome thank you very much okay, Bruce. well anyway um as i indicated before Craig, what we'd like to do is that we want to just reach out to, to vets and we want to share your experience and, and background and along that particular line. And But before we get into that, I'd like to spend some time uh, uh, talking about who Craig is and just how did we get to this point where we're sitting here right here. You got me? First off, a little about your background, Craig. But, you know, where, where, where were you raised and born and all that other good stuff? And then uh, how you got into service? My father was in the Air Force and I was born in Kilwinning, Scotland. My Scotland. father was uh, stationed at uh, Presswick Air Force Base, mm -hmm. and my brother and I were both born in Scotland, and my mom was Scottish, and we moved to the States when I was five months old, oh, wow. and we lived next to Dover Air Force Base. Really? Huh. Yeah. So how long, how long was your dad in the service? He was in, I think, um, eight and a half years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, mm -hmm. he, so he just got out? He in, just got out and States. did the same job as a civilian as he was doing in the Air Force. Really? Make a lot more money. Wow, wow. That's interesting, too, in terms of transitioning for vets, too, a lot of times. They tend not to, a lot of times they, they really don't get the, that support in terms of being able to get that transition res resume, if you will, out to the employers. But now they do quite a bit along that particular line from the standpoint of reaching out to vets now, right? Uh, one of the things that I recently found out about, Bruce, was Microsoft has a program where they can help you you transfer your military experience to civilian experience. Mm -hmm. So the stuff that we did while we were on active duty, for example, I had to know the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Right. Right, it's just one of the different things that we have to know. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Okay, now that now that uh, Dad's, Dad's been his time, you've been, you've been born in Scotland, you're back in the States right now, and then now you, I'm sure you're going to school and this, that, and the other, and all of a sudden up jumped a recruiter like me. Actually, it, Bruce, I never saw a recruiter. You never saw a recruiter? No, sir. I walked right in and said, sign me up. said, well, don't you want to hear about the Coast Guard? I said, I know pretty much everything I need to know. All right. Okay. What, what, what did you, what, why did you go to Coast Guard way? Something you... <laughs> Doesn't every boy grow up and want to be a hero, Bruce? Oh, that's right. That's right. Well, I had the chance to be a hero. Oh, that's cool. And that's, that's, uh, cool. that's a unique experience not everybody gets to do. Mm -hmm. Not everybody lives through it either. Mm -hmm. So you, you signed up where? Where, where, where were you? When you? Actually, I was visiting my grandmother up in Delaware, and I went into Salisbury, Maryland, and signed up with the recruiter there, okay. even though my home record was Fort Lauderdale, Florida, mm -hmm. which is where I was raised. Mm -hmm. So you were assigned there locally? You, went, you went, went to boot camp there in the area? I was fortunate enough to be number three out of three companies okay. out of about 180 people, so mm -hmm. I was able to choose my duty station, Great. which I decided to go right back home, okay. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Really? Wow. One of the world's busiest Coast Guard stations. Yes, I imagine. You know what I'm saying? What were some of the things that you were doing down there? Um, primarily, we do search and rescue, but at the time, that's when the, uh, the Cubans and the Haitians were all entering Florida, and okay. there was a lot of chaos going on. There was a lot of drug activity down in Miami. There were a lot of riots. The police were killing the drug dealers and selling the dope. Wow. And wow. all kinds of stuff was going on at that particular time. 
what were some of your experiences, some of the, some of the things that you got involved? Maybe citing one, one incident that you thought was very interesting and, and pretty dangerous too. Yeah. I guess uh, I was interviewed about this before, and it's, it still stands out in my mind. There was a propane barge that was being towed by a tugboat, and a yacht had lost power and was going between the tugboat and the barge, mm -hmm. and was going to get smacked by the the, the barge. Right, right, right. It was a propane barge. Uh -huh. So if that boat had hit, it could have exploded. I was on the bow of a 41-footer in a storm throwing a line to the man on the other boat on his bow. And we were able to pull him enough that when the barge came by, it ripped the whole platform, the diving platform, off the back of the boat. Wow. If it had gone a little deeper and hit into the engine compartment, it would have been a, an explosion, mm. which would have leveled a good part of Fort Lauderdale. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, when, when you start thinking about the Coast Guard, I mean, you, you got to go out there and you rescue and this, that, and that. Those seas are pretty rough sometimes. And, I mean, you're out there, I mean, flopping all over the place and this, that, and that, and falling back. That's some pretty dangerous work, buddy. It is dangerous. You know, in fact, a friend of mine who was a member of the Coast Guard was saying that, you know, he'd got, he had back problems at one point in time. He busted a leg and, and all kinds of weird things. But, you know, they go back and they, they've got some of the best, I guess, medical staff there is, I guess, that you go to and... Fixed him up, and he went right back in. In fact, he's still making a career of it. Is he? Yeah, yeah, very much so. Okay. Yeah, I'd say for a lot of people that are in the service that they shouldn't get out. I got out after eight years, another 12. I would have been retired now for 15 years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, a lot of people think that way. You and I think that way. You know, <laughs> yeah. I spent my 10. I spent my 10. But, well, you know, it, 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 things happen, yeah. right? Things happen, but you're still here, right? Well, I still I wanted to go to college. Yeah. That was an okay. important thing for me to even join the service was mm -hmm. to have the money to be able to go to school. Now, tell me this. Okay, now you spent eight years, in the, and then all of a sudden, it's my understanding, I saw your DD-214. You got out basically a short time, so to speak, and and went to school, went to right. with Florida State. Now, talk about that, Sid. How long did you? How did you? How long did you go to school? Well, I um, when I joined Coast Guard, a buddy of mine joined the Marine Corps, and we okay. were best friends back home. So when he got out of the Corps, I was getting out of the Coast Guard, and we decided to room together at Florida State. Okay. So that helped both of us quite right. a bit yes. to both military and mm -hmm. growing up together and stuff mm -hmm. to to mm -hmm. be able to get through school. Mm -hmm. Did and then go? using the GI Bill. Okay, you used GI Bill. And then you, did you did you complete your, your school? Yes, I did. I got a degree in international affairs with a minor in political science from Florida State University. Uh -huh. No wonder you've been trying to campaign against me. Though. Well, it wouldn't be hard. <laughs> good, 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 good. <laughs> you know, I, I was also thinking along that particular line. Again, folks, we're, we're, we're kind of like sharing uh, some of our experience, if you will, while we were both in the military and, and what happened when you get out. Oftentimes, you know, a vet, uh, uh, you know, when, when they're looking at the GI Bill and they're going to school and whatever, they really don't know what they're really going for. You were fortunate enough that, that uh, one, you were still kind of in a civilian kind of an environment aspect of it. But a lot of times guys are just wanting to make the buck, you know, just get out and get involved, if you will, and really not ready to really start college, if you will. You got me on tech school or whatever. They, they need some time, if you will. They need some time, or just like you were saying, to be able to... Um, uh, define, if you will, that position in the military with, with a position outside. Right, so and that's speak. a difficult thing to do, to it's translate good. the experiences you had in the service to civilian uh, occupation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now, now that you're out, you've got your degree and whatever, so what do you do? What do you do with that degree? What do you do with it? Not very much. Not very much. <laughs> Actually... International Affairs allowed me to be a better salesman. I've been a salesman most of my life, and I think when you have an understanding of the cultures and different cultures and different types of people from different walks of life, that it aids you in the ability to convince them to buy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's primarily where that my education where helped me, was so being able to... sales. Yes, in sales. Made, made your sales. That's, I think that's why we got along with yep. the background, too. Now, um, now, that, now that you're doing this kind of a thing, aspect of it, now all of a sudden, you know, Things are catching up with you in reference to uh, some of the concerns and issues you had while you were in the service or blah, blah, blah. Just basically uh, uh, actually getting back, if you will, in the civilian life. Fair? Right. Throw, throw it out on the table. Why, 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 why do you think that's such an issue? <laughs> I think a lot of times when you join the military, you have ideas of what you're going to do when you get out. And a lot of people get very confused while they're in the military, and when they get out, they don't have an idea of what they want to do. 
the transition from military life to civilian life is very difficult and there's no instruction or training or anybody takes you by the hand or a veteran service officer to mm -hmm. help you through that transition. You pretty much have to stumble through it on your own. I was fortunate that I was in a position in the Coast Guard where I did administrative work. I was what they call a human. Mm -hmm. You guys call us office pogues. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a background in paperwork so mm -hmm. I knew a lot about how to get around the system and how, where I should go and what to do and uh, all that information that I've gained throughout these years is what I try to um, to uh, give to other vets to explain mm -hmm. to them why they need to do it and how they can benefit from going mm -hmm. and seeing the VA counselors or actually discussing the problems that they had while they're on active duty and they might still be having now. Mm -hmm. You know Greg and, and I'm thinking about the, the the amount of time that you've been spending in the VA and et cetera, and, and talking to vets, and even like myself and whatever. But then there's been issues with the Veterans Administration, as you know, in terms of servicing to, servicing the vet, if you will, and with, especially with the influx of the of the, the the National Guardsmen folks, not not like us, if you will. We were in a whole different ball game aspect of it. We got boot camp. They really didn't get as much boot camp as they should have gotten boot camp. But that impacted, if you will, the the i.e. the visualization of what a vet is. That really brought it to the table aspect of it. And now there are many, many more issues with reference to vets like that that are in problem. That have problems, if you will, where they be now. We came, now we come up with a with the term PTSD yeah, because during our time, there, there was no such animal. If you understand what I'm saying, fair, fair. See, see? and so now all of a sudden that's there. So now that it's, it's on the table, what's your reaction uh, to to uh, to that? You know, we were in the, in the to the whole issue of, of whether or not the vets are actually doing a good job. I think as uh, time passes, there's transitions that are made in the military. In fact, I have a friend of mine that was in the Marine Corps, and he told me about where well, they had to go into a tunnel and they they pull a tear gas uh, canister right. and they have to sit there and sing the Marine Corps hymn. Yes, exactly. I did that. A lot of that old stuff is no longer done. They don't beat the crap out of you. They don't, yeah. they don't do a lot of the things that yeah. they used to do. So in a lot of ways, it's gotten a lot better. But then when you look at the duties that these men and women are given and what they're asked to do, it's uh, sometimes very overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. You know, you brought up a good point, too, because the canister thing, I had to go through that same experience. And I just happened to be the guide on. I was the head guy for my particular platoon. And there were a lot of things we had to do and that I had to do uh, that my DI basically told me to do, okay? And, um, but it was a very interesting experience. Like you said, we, we don't do those kinds of things anymore. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> that type of training, which was hard-nosed training aspect of it, was really an asset when I did go overseas, if you will, and, and getting along, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, basically, they gave us a really good training aspect of it. Now... Now, the, the thing about, I'd like to talk to you now a little bit more about that is, you know, once you get out, whatever, and you had all these so-called experiences and whatever, now this whole issue about the PTSD aspect of it, that's a major issue aspect of it. Was that something that sort of identified you with at, at, point, at some point in time? Well, I had traumatic experiences when I was in the Coast Guard. Okay. And you don't think about it at the time, you just kind of shove everything aside. But what it caused me to do was to, it increased my drinking, mm -hmm. it increased my risky behavior, mm -hmm. it increased me fighting in bars and doing a lot of other dangerous things, carrying guns and all kinds of other things yeah. that I probably shouldn't mention. <laughs> yeah, right. But, you, but you're right. I mean, I think a, a number of vets, you know, I've gone through that same process in, in all due respect, but nearly, in fact, I was, um, uh, I lost my first marriage, if you will, and, and, and as a result of that, my kids and, and the like, and it's tough. It's really a tough situation. You know, you think back about the whole deal, what could have happened differently, but the support base was not there. No. It, it, from, the, from the VA standpoint, as far as the vet. And then the other thing, and I'm throwing this out, we, we're talking a little bit. <coughs> By the way, we're talking, I'm, I'm talking to Craig, Craig Murphy, and uh, we're talking about vets. We're talking about vets today. We're going to open up the line, by the way, in the second half, half hour, and give you an opportunity to get, for vets to give us a call. And, and if your parents, uh, or wives or husbands or whatever do give us a call because in all due respect uh, uh, there might be some things on your mind that you might want to share with us so we can we can basically kind of give you a little sort of a road map in terms of what to do and take advantage if you will of both uh, Craig's experience and my experience both you know when I think about the VA with the medical aspect of it you know that, that deal is that you basically just go in get your number right but then when you start thinking about when we were when we were in in the early days there were servicemen there with the vets. 
and the, the VA aspect of it. I mean, the medical center aspect right. of it. They were all VA. Now they're civilians. And there's a difference. There is a big difference. <clears throat> Talk about that a little bit. For example, I went to, one of the problems that I had uh, throughout my life is uh, anger problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I went to anger management through the VA. And uh, you have a lot of people that uh, were teaching the class, uh, extremely educated young people, very well paid, I'm sure. And they're trying to relate to veterans. And they were asking the veterans questions. And the veterans can kind of let you know whether they're interested in what you're saying, yeah. whether they answer you back. None of the veterans were answering any of them back. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of the things that I really found astounding, uh, Bruce, was that uh, the only one to mention suicide in that class was me. Mm -hmm. Now, as you know and I know, there are 22 suicides uh, per day. Yeah. That's over 8,000 members killing themselves per year. So the whole idea of having an anger management program and not having the words of suicide and the thoughts of suicide and the PTSD and all the mm -hmm. other things that are all contributing to these young men and women not mm -hmm. being able to cope with society mm -hmm. should have been mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I said, you got, you got two different groups. You got old core like us, right? And then you got the new core. And, the, and I need to explain that to these folks a lot of times because most, most of them were reservists when they got Iraq and all that other good stuff aspect of it. These folks had jobs, they had families, if you will, and, and in all due respect, they really didn't have the, the kind of boot camp that we had during our particular time. It was more of a liberal kind of a deal. And, uh, and so all of a sudden now they're in this war aspect of it. And you know, these are real rounds. Yeah. And, uh, and I can remember my experience, we didn't, we didn't go out, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, we did the job, you know, we didn't, we did the job, I'll, I'll just leave it that way. But the bottom line is that these young beat like, a whole different ball games. you know, they have to, they got TV telling them where they're going, by the yeah. way, and, and going there at night to do, the, you know what I'm saying? Because in many ways, the, the Viet Cong were, were actually working on the base during the day and, and Viet Cong at night. And all sorts of goodies, but but they, but it, Iraq same thing, but it's worse. Yes, it was worse aspect of it. Okay, now again, l let's talk about again uh, uh, the the uh, service related kind of situation, the PTSD and this, that, and the other, along that particular line. Uh, what were some of your experiences? Not like that. Now you're out. And I'm, I'm talking back and forth, and you better break in any time you want to. But you're talking to these vets all the time aspect of it. You know, you're talking to them now, just like we had, we sit down and shoot the breeze and whatever. And then you make it aware, you, you're making me aware of the fact that I do have some issues and vice versa. We, we basically uh, working on one another, so to right. speak, if you will. But but what were some of the experiences you've had with some of the folks that you've talked with? Because I know you've been out there, you've been outreaching for days. Talk about some of the things. It's rough. I mean, uh, a lot of these uh, young men and women go over there and they have to experience things that nobody should ever have to experience. And then they get back home and they think, well, oh, great, um, I'm back in society. I, mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, I'm going to do great. You know, and many of them don't do great because they, there's a lot caught up in their mind. Uh, the things that they were asked to do over in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan and other wars uh, just doesn't sit well. It doesn't go away. There's all kinds of constant reminders that come up. For example, babies for me, babies crying and not being able to save those babies when mm -hmm. I was in the Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. When I hear them now, it's one of my triggers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these men have, uh, men and women have triggers. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, it, it changes your whole outlook on mm -hmm. life when you, you suddenly get transported back into mm -hmm. the horror of what you were doing in the past. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, it's in some ways, it's brought up in a little tiny mm -hmm. experience. And what, what do you think we can do? Let's talk about some solution to this deal. Do you think it may, it may have more meaningful to... To have vets maybe do more counseling, have more vets do. I mean, have a, a, a the background has to be that to be at least vets, if you will. Well, one and of the things level. in my experience, Bruce, is that with my training and background, I didn't, I don't want to work for the VA. The VA is uh, having an extremely hard time even keeping up with the current load, much mm -hmm. less the load that's going to be happening. Mm -hmm. So I've ch I've chosen to work on my own. I set up a program, Bruce. I, I don't know if you remember, I was working for the ARC. Yep. And that's with the uh, uh, handicapped and uh, developmentally challenged people. Right. And I set up a program where I could hire vets and pay them cash that day. 
Right. And what that does is that helps a lot of these younger vets when they get out of the service and they're waiting for their claims or they're waiting for their money to come through and they mm -hmm. don't have any money. Mm -hmm. And they go out and they might uh, perhaps commit a crime or, or do something that they shouldn't mm -hmm. do and then they get caught up in the whole legal system. I thought by providing them money at the same time as they got their work done, mm -hmm. unlike a lot of the other right, places right. that they can go, that it would enable them to be able to yeah, take care of small too. matters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good point, and, uh, and that what brings up what, what comes up to. I'm sure you had that experience. Huh? You, you see the you see the, the the folks on the corners, you know, and this, that, and the other, saying, "I'm a vet," et cetera, et cetera, and that bothers me, you know, from the standpoint of a lot of those folks are just making picking up a buck or two, but the vets, you know, if they are vet, you know, I mean, it's, it, you got to pick them up as far as I'm concerned. In fact, I uh, this last campaign aspect of it, my thought was that was one of the things I wanted as far as the platform. No one should be on the corner. If you're a vet or not a vet, I think the police department should pick them up. Got me? And if they say they're a vet, take them over to the VA. Yeah. Get them the card. If they're not a if they're not a vet, take them over to another entity and get them off the street. Uh, they should not be on the street. And people are we are sort of in a giving kind of a mindset aspect. Of it. You give them money, let them go out and buy drugs. They go and buy drugs or they buy alcohol and this, that, and the other, and that doesn't help the situation out at all. Okay, so uh, that, that that I understand. Remember the last time you brought this this lady over to the shop over there at Norma's Kitchen, and I met her, and uh, see, she, I think she had mentioned something about the fact that there was some sort of a program where they actually pick people off on the corner. Was that is that fact or maybe, maybe not? Maybe that, we were, we were trying to get into the conversation. We were trying to yeah, get we, into. We wanted to do it. We wanted to do it, right? But no, that that that's an issue. Have you ever stopped? Uh, I've stopped off the road and just approached the guy and say, "Hey, show me, show me your ID. You got? Uh, I don't have one. I lost it." And okay, well, get in the car. Let's go down there and get you one. But the guy didn't want. Well, he wasn't a vet. Okay. So what do you do? What do you think? What, what can we do about that kind of situation? It's a tough thing. Uh, there's uh, a, a gentleman on Hayden Island, and I can pull off of there, and every year he's got a sign up says he's 67, U.S. Yeah, Army. I saw that right on the corner. Next dangerous, year it's, dangerous corner too. it's 68. Next year it's 69 years of age. Right, right, and right. he's always out there. And I talked to him, and mm -hmm. he is a veteran. He is a veteran. And uh, a lot of the veterans, as you know, they won't go to the VA, yeah. they won't get any help, and, and, and now all that does is just cause them more trouble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have these rights, you have these benefits, and if you don't push to get them, you're not going to get them. Right, right, right. So, so what, what do you think we do? I mean, you know, you, you've been here, you've seen all the politics, you, and they're still discussing it in Congress. Well, now they're in a, they're in a whole different mindset right now. You know, it's, it's either the IRS, or we're right in the midst of a, another presidential campaign aspect of it. And so a lot of the attention is going to be taken off from what we talked about for the VA. All of a sudden, the VA was a big issue. Right. And I would suggest very strongly that if you are a vet out there, get involved. Get involved in this presidential campaign. Get involved in the election. Go out and register the vote and vote. And make sure people know that you are a vet and that you want to know what these people who are going to be running for office, uh, how do they feel about vets and, and where are the services and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because if you don't ask, you won't get, trust me, fair? Fair. Fair to say? I agree. Okay, fine. So, so what are some of your views about, um, about the politics of the vet? Give me, give me some thoughts. I know you've been talking a little bit more, but I'm going to get you talking because <laughs> you've got a lot of information. I think it doesn't even matter about politics anymore. The, the situation has gotten to a point where there's, you almost need a vote of no confidence sort of uh, like they do in the UK. Just get them all out and start over. And there's so much greed and corruption and stuff going on. I don't know if you recently saw in the paper, Bruce, that uh, 371 of the upper echelon of the VA were given performance bonuses from the documentation that was submitted that was incorrect. Right. And that they were paid all this money. 371 paid 2.4 million dollars in performance bonuses. You, the VA is not performing very well, so how do you get a performance bonus? Well, like you said, during our time, there was no such animal. These are civilians, okay? It was military. I mean, basically, it was military. Basically, uh, that, that were basically all these responsibilities, and their ranking was they were getting paid just like like all of us in a very normal, yeah. and it's basically triple or quadruple, if you will, the budget. Uh, for for the for the old military aspect of it, and a lot of times again these folks don't really relate to the vets. 
in many well, ways. Well, I think in a lot of ways we need our own political action committee. Yeah. We should be up there fighting for our benefits. Why do they have uh, uh, the, the sugar industry or the pork industry, why do they have their political packs and they can mm -hmm. go up and push their influence on Congress and the senators mm -hmm. and get what they want? Let's have our own pack. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with you. In fact, again, going back to our times aspect of it, I was lobbying groups where in most cases it was the CO or the sergeant major yeah. or the platoon leader, right? Or the squad leader, right? And the Coast Guard, I, it was either a chief or, you know, right? Company or commander. Or first class, company commander, and aspect of it. But now it's a whole different ball game aspect of it. And this is really not helping our service. I really don't. I mean, that's just me. That's just my attitude about the whole piece on that piece aspect of it. Mm, interesting. What What were some of the other things you were doing in, 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 when you were outreaching to vets? I know you. I know you, one of the things that you you've done, which was a benefit on my end of it, because I I wasn't going to I, no, just I wasn't going to go up there and, and get my card. And you said, no, go down there. You need uh, to get your card. I think talking to you, Bruce, and understanding some of the things that you went through and realizing that a lot of the things you went through are the same thing I went through. The yeah. drinking, the drug, and the, the chasing the women, the late nights, risky behavior, um, yeah. always being armed, hypervigilant, and yeah. all the other stuff yeah. that goes along with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're pretty yeah. keyed up. Yeah, yeah. It can be very much so. And it, it does, friend. I mean, I'm pretty calm now, though. Yeah. You are, too. I'm <laughs> still trying. <laughs> Well, look, what we're going to do is that uh, we got we still got about another five minutes or so, and uh, there were some other things that you were you you you, you were you were sharing out with me just for a moment. Talk a little bit about your PTSD, if you don't mind, because I know you got a, you got your dog here. You may not want to as much, but I think it'd be a benefit to show that the credibility, if you in terms of what we're trying to do and what we're trying to reach out, if you will, to vets who may not think that they're there, but they are, okay, and they can get help, right? Yep. But sometimes it's a long process. In, in, in your particular case, like you said, well, just talk about it a little bit. How long has it taken you to get them to recognize? <clears throat> well, for a long time, Bruce, after my experiences, and uh, my experiences is uh, picking up a lot of dead bodies out of the water, mm -hmm. explosions, uh, a lot of uh, people getting hurt, um, shark bites, and all kinds of weird things. And using all those experiences and talking to others, you sort of kind of put things together that, well, you did that too. You drank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you raced out. Mm -hmm. You wanted to kill your wife. Mm -hmm. I wanted to kill my brother. Mm -hmm. You know, on and on and on. Mm -hmm. A lot of the ex experiences are the same. Mm -hmm. So being able to connect with somebody in that way helps both in, yeah. in being mm -hmm. able to understand. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you're suffering from problems and you're having a difficult time, the hardest thing to do is to reach out. And a lot of these veterans go to VA and, and they have a bad experience. Maybe somebody bumps into them. Maybe somebody does something mm -hmm. they don't like or uses mm -hmm. a word they don't like. And then they shut down and they leave and they won't come back. Mm -hmm. And when they don't go back, they're not, they're, they're not ever going to get their benefits. Mm -hmm. The problems that they're experiencing aren't ever going to get any better. Unless you go and you get help and you get treatment and you understand what's going on with your own mind mm -hmm. and why you do different things and how you can shield yourself from those events, those sounds or whatever oh, the yeah, triggers okay. are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You know, I, 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 I like the idea of what you were saying because I'm thinking about a, another dear friend of mine who used to work right here in, in the studio, uh, a gentleman by the name of Larry Dunham. He was in the military in the Army, and he, well, I'd say recently died of Agent Orange. Very dear friend of mine, very dear friend of mine. But he was he was a very neat guy, but, but I, sometimes you wonder, I, he never said anything to me about it. We talked about, uh, about the military and his, his time in the military. But he didn't. He didn't get the medical attention that he should have gotten early on. Okay. And that's his right as a veteran. Yes, right. Exactly. And so we need to outreach more. And then, and then, like I said, you got to get the the military back in this process. For some strange reason, they they just don't. I mean, it's, it's all about the money too. A lot of times, you know what I'm saying. And uh, so it's a very it's a very difficult situation that we're in. At this well, we point have plenty time. of money for war. We don't have plenty of money taking vet uh, taking care of the veterans of those wars. Yes, and See, that's a problem, Bruce. That's a big problem. And now we now we're sitting here thinking about getting them back over, getting back into this this war. It's really. I'm ridiculous. extremely disappointed in Obama, Bruce. Yeah, How about well, you? Well, I'm I'm a, it's not it's not Obama. It's the people behind it. It's like the defense contractors who got big lobbyists who basically wanted to go out and buy all this proliferation aspect of it to use it again. I mean, I, I just didn't like the idea of us being over there the way that was. I'm just saying. I mean, I, I served like you. I, I walked in and I, I signed up for the Corps, okay? And I understood what that was all about. 
but today is a whole different ball game. It's a whole different ball game. I mean, uh, you know, politically speaking, and when I thought about the Iraqi war aspect, I remember the point was, okay, we're going to go out and help these folks, and and the, the point was we were going to get paid back, so to speak. Yeah, I think that oil. was Bush that mentioned all that, dear. And we never got a dime. Okay, okay, so. I'm not. I'm not. In, not into that piece right there. That's let's another, bring up. Uh, that, let's yeah, not talk, talk about, about Halliburton, yeah, KBR, yeah, yeah, and Dick Cheney. Yeah, thank you very much. So, <laughs> that, what we're gonna do with it, on that note, we're gonna go on and take a short break. We're gonna take a short break, and I want to remind you again. Hey, look, please give us a call. We're gonna put the phone on the on your monitor on your TV screen. Do give us a call, and if you're a vet out there and you got some things on your mind, you share with us about if you're a parent or whatever. Uh, give us a call, okay? We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Thanks, Greg. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Again, I'm Bruce Broussard here, and uh, and I've got a good dear friend of mine. His name is Craig Murphy, and Craig and I have been known for known one another for quite some time. We're talking about veterans, you know. We're talking about issues with veterans, you know. We're talking about the VA, but more primarily, we're trying to reach out, if you will, reach out to veterans, those, those folks who have benefits, who have been in the service, in all due respect. I don't give a damn how old you are. You need to get out there and get registered because you you know that that support base is there for you. Very very important. Okay, there are many issues, we, but we are both veterans and and uh, we're out there too. In fact, we, we we're already talking about the possibility of putting something together and see whether or not we can do a little bit more outreach. Both of us were salesmen in our own rights. Yep. You know, right. So this is Craig, and I as I indicated before, uh, uh, we're going to reach out to you today. Uh, on the uh, out to you, we're going to put the the number on the screen here, not very shortly, if you will, and um, uh, we want you to call in. We want you to give us a call. That's why we're going to have the phone number out there on the screen to give us a call. So whether you, you have a friend, or if you're a vet, or whatever, you got something on your mind, give us a call. Because in all due respect, this particular show goes on YouTube, and it's going to be reaching out all over the country. It'll even hit some of the politicians because we're right in the middle mix of politics at this point in time. In the elections, that and the other, and they need to know. So we want to educate them about the issues of the veterans. Okay, and I, I make that point because I just recently filed. I recently, as you know, I ran for office for county commissioner, and um, and during that particular time, uh, when I was interviewed by with all the media aspect of it, they never wanted to talk to me about veterans. Really? They never wanted to, because you know why? <clears throat> They'd never been in the service. All these guys that were dealing, uh, in, men and women both, were had never been in the service before. They, didn't, they had never been in the service. They never, the draft wasn't involved in the process. So they didn't know how to talk to me. And I was trying to educate them, but they didn't want to hear about it because they didn't have the background. Right. Okay? And that, that is an issue. There's an issue. And so that was the reason why I threw this stuff out on the table aspect of it. The same thing with senior citizens. A lot of times I was being interviewed by these young folks. But guess what? They'd never been a senior citizen, right? They hadn't got there yet, right? So they don't relate. So I'd take my hat off and I'm going to show my grade, et cetera. So that's another issue. And the same thing with the same thing being in business. 
You know, I had my business T-shirt on, et cetera, et cetera, but they had never been in business before. So it's, it's, it's something that we need to understand, that we got to reach out to all of us, and we need to understand that we're all living here together. Is that fair? So here, we're talking about Veterans Day. Here's Craig. Craig is here with me. If you, if you lost that the first half hour, Craig was basically gave you some good background, and what you're going to do, you can just t tune back in on the repeat. And, and if you, you do have a 24-7 access because the show will be on YouTube and you can go back and refer it to it, okay? But get involved, okay? So, Craig, uh, as we were getting off, we were sort of like talking about, uh, about some of the things uh, politically that we recognize when we were in the military about how all this stuff starts and, and how the little guys like us are basically getting the blood of it going out on the front line. And some of the guys are dictating for us to go on the front line and sometimes for the wrong reason, right? Is that fair? Okay. That's fair. And I, and I think many veterans have a, a fee, some feedback on on the politics of today. Right? Is that fair? I think that's very fair. Now, let's go through the process of uh, when one signs up. Uh, you know, if, if you're out there as a veteran you don't have your card, what is that process? What do they do? Uh, you need to go down to the VA and they have stations where you can, uh, uh, computer stations where you can actually enter in your own information or they have uh, people that can help you enter uh, the information. One of the things that I try to get people to do, Bruce, is to go see a vo veteran service officer. Okay. There are a variety of different veteran service officers in different organizations. One of the ones that we recently used was the Veterans of Foreign Wars, the yeah. VFW. Now, that's Roger Proctor down in the VA here in Vancouver, and Roger's been a, an amazing asset for me uh, to refer veterans to him because Roger and his wife are extremely uh, adept at what they do. And to and help volunteers, veterans. volunteers, right? The volunteers, it's a volunteer organization or is it a VA? I think they're paid. I think yeah, that they are veteran service officers, so they do get paid. Okay, okay, okay. So, so the whole idea is that uh, they can give you, again, they were, they were, they were veterans. Yep. They, they are. They, they were veterans. That's that's because they don't have that that service in in, in some ways in the, in the, C, the VA aspect of it, right? Now, you know, in terms of signing up, okay, that, that's your. Why don't you cut that off there for a minute? No problem. No problem. You just take your time. You're in good shape. You're in good shape. Okay. All right. Now, as far as signing up, we we got the hill. A lot of folks talk about the hill here in the Portland Metropolitan area, right? But they can look at it, look that, look it up, right? Or Google it on their deal and say, hey, Correct. VA, right? Yeah, because you got the one in the, you got the one in Vancouver. It's Actually, not, the one in Bru in Vancouver is a regional Veterans Administration. Okay. Office. It is. A, it is the regional. Okay. Yes, it is. And now the one on the hill, that that's what. Uh, that's it's medical. That's the medical, but that's the largest medical for this area. Correct. Think, it is for, for this particular area. That's right there. And and a I, lot of the vets do go up to. Uh, to the Portland VA because they don't have the uh, the doctors that are needed for a lot of them at the Vancouver. Right, and a lot of times they will refer you if, if in fact you need uh, in, in additional stuff, right? Yeah, and in that. fact, I had some cancer scares recently, and I went to a um, a dermatologist, and they sent me to a civilian dermatologist, mm -hmm. which I thought was very kind of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I might add, I'm gonna pull mine out at this point in time, but when you go to the VA, right, in both locations, right, you can pull yours out too. You got one, you got yours, yours. Why don't you pull yours out there? But I thought it was very, very unique, and it's it, it some benefit. That yeah, is right there. That's one great. I got one just like that. Why don't you put that? Where's Tom? At? Let's put that right up to the, to the deal. There. Can you get that? Can you, can you get that one? Okay, Tom. Tom's going to come in and check that out. But it's a, it's a, it's very unique, and it's very useful too, right? Yes, it is. Because a lot of times you can get uh, discounts on a lot of stuff. You know, you show your card out there. I'm going to show that. Show, hold that baby up there real quick. That Tom will show you this deal, and. Uh, this is Craig, and, and that's what they issue you. They put your photo on it. They put your photo on it. They've got your ID number on it. And it says Department of Veterans Affairs on it. This guy's name and the whole nine yard. And then that backside, what, what's on the backside? You just mentioned that. They got, okay, they've got the phone number down there for vets aspect of it. So it's a, it's a, it's a very deal. And, and, and really, some of the service is very unique. What else is there? It says service connected here. And that means a lot of the, the, the problems that I have were from directly being in the service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, good, good. Okay, thank you very much. All right, but that's what they will issue you. Yes. They'll issue it. And your DD-214 is not like the, the old days when we had it. It's your Social Security. Social Security number, the four. Correct. Yeah, the last four of your Social Correct. Security number. We're trying to make it a little easier for us to remember aspect <laughs> of it. But I still remember my M-16, and my M-1, I had the M-1 first, et cetera. But the bottom line is that uh, the, the IDs are there, aspect of it. But seriously, 
consider making sure you've got your your and some people say that they don't even they don't qualify you qualify if you're a veteran you can get a card right <clears throat> talk about that I have a friend of mine that was uh, in the Vietnam War. He was a cook, Bruce, and he felt that because he was a cook, he hadn't served like the other men. Mm -hmm. And I told him, you got to be kidding me. How can you possibly feel that way? If you weren't feeding those men, they weren't able to go out there and kill the enemy. Yeah, yeah. So you were a direct part of it. And I tried to explain to him, as a cook, you're mm -hmm. just as uh, equal mm -hmm. to benefits as anybody else. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't go to Vietnam or Iraq or whatever, you just stayed white. You still in the military because you're a support Correct. mechanism aspect of it. So you can you can qualify for this card. And a lot of times the card is a lot of me is there's benefits, if you will. Um, uh, uh, you you can get discounts. A lot of times people ask you about the VA, and, and it's not too bad. You know, you get ten percent off on yep. on in, anything and everything for that. In matter. fact, recently, Bruce, I was in the uh, Portland airport, and I went to Columbia. Um, Columbia Sportswear, and at the airport, they offer 20% off to vets, which I didn't know. So every time I go through the airport now, the I'm airport? going to, at the, the airport? airport, yes, sir. And for, for what kind of service? Any service, any really? military service, if you show them this card, you can get 20% off. 20% off. Hmm, hmm, that's interesting. Oh, I Most that. of the discounts are around 10%. Right, right. Home right. Depot has them. Um, and in fact, uh, Home Pete Depot now has uh, parking lots. I, saw, I noticed They got that. the veteran parking I noticed spaces. That. I, noticed that. That. I noticed that. Hey, did you hear that other services? Please remember to think about that. Uh, Lowe's and all yeah, the rest Lowe's of Lowe's and yeah. the rest of those guys may, might consider doing that, right? No, but it really is it's very neat, and we really appreciate the, the outreach, if you will, because we definitely need to do that, because that would really help, if you will, many of the veterans to get back in society. And, uh, and maybe we can get resolve some of those issues about folks on the corner and this, that, and the other. And, and, the, and the drug issue, the drug situation is really bad, too, at this point in time. I mean, I see them quite a bit. You know, pulling out, uh, panhandling and sleeping under buildings and this and that nature. In fact, I'm a, I live out in, on Jansen Beach, and we got a place where folks will go under periodically, and the police have to come and take them out and whatever. It, it, it's not a pretty sight. Oh, this I can happen to many, anybody for that matter. The, the largest percentage of the homeless are veterans, mm -hmm. and I think that's an absolutely, uh, and it's an outrage. But, you know, they don't believe that. You know, I, I really think the public don't believe that. You know that? They don't believe that. The, pe the public don't believe that there are 22 suicides per day, Bruce. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can get that figure from the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's, there's nobody blowing things out of proportion. Well, again, at the same time, you know, you, you think about uh, it, it's, it's not part of the platform. Again, that's what I'm saying. When I, when I filed, uh, when I ran for office aspect of it, there was not a veteran in the crowd that I was running with, you know. And then I look at some of these other races, they don't have any background because we never had the draft. You know, the draft was good for this country. It was the melting pot. It was the melting pot, you know. And, well, we and might differ on that issue, Bruce. Well, I, I do recognize that because we are, yeah, you weren't in the court, you know, but no problem, no, no problem. But I still love you. I love you as a brother. But look, now we got this number here on the screen, and we want you to call. I realize that some of you don't want to call. But if you have a loved one and uh, you weren't in the service and, and uh, you, you married, if you will, a vet, uh, you may want to give us a call. Give us a call. And by the way, they, they do have service too, right? For, um, uh, for wives or a yes, husband they do. who are not, right? They, have they also service? have benefits and there's quite a few things and that they can call. And they can, they call, can, right? they can they call, call and basically go through that same application number. And what's that number? In fact, they can call that number, right? Isn't that, isn't that a vet number there? It's 877-222-8387. Uh, and that's uh, for questions concerning uh, medical yeah. benefits for the veterans. Right. And even if it's not, but still veteran-related, they'll, they'll, they'll direct them, right? Correct. So please, get, get, consider giving, the, giving that number a call. Yeah, 877-222-8387. Okay. Okay, we got that. We got that in there. Very good. Well, buddy, uh, uh, in there any other things that uh, that we may want to discuss at this point in time? Well, I'd like to to mention what recently happened to me while I was over in Hawaii, and I had a service connected problem with my ear. My ear was discharging liquid, and I knew something was wrong. So the very first day I got there, I went to the VA um, clinic. Mm -hmm. Now, the VA clinic told me they didn't have my records. They don't have access to my records. That's ridiculous. Now, if I remember, Hawaii is a state. And didn't we serve for the federal government? Yes, yes. <laughs> so I, I, 
I waited and they said that they would put me in the system. So they actually hand put me into the system. But still they were not able to help me. They weren't able to access the records, weren't able to give me a prescription. In fact, a doctor with a perforated eardrum and an infected middle eardrum gave me a bottle of hydrogen peroxide for treatment. <laughs> I ended up going to a civilian doctor and going to get civilian medication and it cost me $535 out of pocket. So that's kind of a shame that I wasn't able to use my military benefits at a military facility and ended up having to go. But there, there's more than one way to skin but a you cat. Had your card? Did you have your card? I had my card and it didn't matter. But what I'm doing now is I went to the patient advocate and found out that what I can do is I can ask for reimbursement. So I've asked for reimbursement for all my expenses during that period, and okay. they should uh, reimburse me. Have they, have, you, have you gotten back to you at all? Not yet, no, but I'm, I'm sure but they But now, as, as I understand, is that when you file and you, get, you, you go through the from medical aspect of it, your, your records are universal. That's what I was told. They give you a number, in fact, the, the, the last four. That's your record. Well, that's one of the things that I brought up recently, too. I'm also a member of 40 at 8, Bruce, if you remember. the 48. You're, you're also yeah, a member yeah, of that. Yeah, and recently yeah. we had a publication come out from them explaining that veterans, if they're having trouble, they may want to just go to the emergency, any emergency hospital, and get treatment. And then the VA will uh, re reimburse. reimburse them. So I think that's a great thing for all veterans to know, that even if you have a toothache, if it's driving you crazy, just go down to the emergency, emergency room, room yeah. and get, that gets you started. Yeah. And another thing that I'd like to mention is that the squeaky wheel always gets the oil. Mm -hmm. If you don't keep bothering them, keep asking them, and try to keep doing the same thing over and over and over, they're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. It took me over eight years to get uh, qualified for uh, or diagnosed as a PTSD right, sufferer. Right, right. That's man. eight years of me going and telling the same story about the same thing over and over and over wow. and over. Wow, eight years. Eight years. And there are many veterans out there that are basically the same thing, but they get frustrated. They do. Or embarrassed, if you will. They don't want anybody to know this piece, right? Is that well, fair? I have a friend of mine. He has a, a, a large cyst on his, uh, his uh, scrotum. Okay. And it's from uranium poisoning. Hmm. And he will not go and get it checked. He won't go to the VA. He won't mention it to anybody. He's not going to probably get it fixed. Mm, mm, mm. Well, you know, just like you reminded me about the guy that uh, at Jansen Beach, you know, stands out there like he said, every year. He does the same thing every year in aspect of it. You talk to him, whatever, but will not reach out to, will not go to the VA. Fair? He should be picked up. They should. They should pick him up and take him down to the VA. Get him his card. If the Portland can, police can pick up Vagrant, uh, vagrants and homeless in Portland and drop them off over in Vancouver and same with the Vancouver place to pick up the <laughs> the homeless and drop them off over here in Portland we should be able to pick up these veterans and be able to get them to the services that they need gee I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just ridiculous it's just ridiculous so so what do you what do you say to these politicians now how can they get involved because like I said they're running for office at this point in time right well what do you what do you say to these guys and men and women both well, about um, to get them on board about the issues that we get, we're talking about here today. As you know, Bruce, I live in Vancouver, and recently a friend of mine that was, uh, he's running for senator, Bob Dingenthal. And Bob Dingenthal, is, uh, he understands a lot of the veterans' issues, and I recently told him about my story about being over in Hawaii, and I told mm -hmm. him I was getting in a fight with the VA, and maybe he might want to join me in this fight. Okay, good. So we'll see. Yeah. And also there's... Um, a couple other people that I've been reaching out to, uh, Senator Pridemore, Craig Pridemore mm -hmm. is now running for city commissioner over in mm -hmm. Portland. I've uh, gotten to know him, and I'm going to ask him if he can't get into the fight also. That's good. Well, in fact, I, I, my next show, I'm going to do it. It's going to be a repeat, but uh, Representative Dennis Richardson, uh, who's running for governor for the state of Oregon, I've had him on. In fact, he, he, he was in Vietnam when I was in Vietnam, and the whole nine-yard aspect of it. He was a helicopter pilot. And uh, but the bottom line is that um, uh, he is running for office and he's very familiar with veteran issues and whatever, very sharp, whatever. So he's going to be on the show next week. So you may want to tune in. And uh, so we, we are going to have someone that uh, we can speak to once elected. <laughs> now, uh, anything else uh, you may want to share with them, share with me about them and anybody for that matter? Um, just if you're. <clears throat> a spouse of a vet and they're going through a lot of these things I was very fortunate to marry my wife uh, a lot of the trouble that I was having probably wasn't ever going to end I wasn't going to quit drinking I wasn't going to mm -hmm. keep doing a lot of the crazy stuff that I was doing in fact my wife told me move out 
or quit drinking. Mm -hmm. And I've been <laughs> sober now for 24 years. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big part of the reason that I've been able to uh, gain some success in my recovery mm -hmm. is that I've put aside these uh, major problems and tried to concentrate on what is going on and why I feel the way that mm -hmm. I do and why I react to the way that I do. Mm -hmm. But then we come, I'm coming right back to that first point is that how do you get the public, the majority public, to understand that even though this is just one segment of our society, I mean, everybody has problems, okay? But why should they spend more, why should they focus on the veteran? What do you, what, what do you say to that? All the rights that you got, currently have problems. and the way you live right now is because of the veterans that sacrificed. Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand and you don't appreciate that, maybe you should live in another country. Mm -hmm. Good point. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, so. Uh, you know that, that is an issue, Greg. You know that that is an issue about because a lot of times we get we get uh, if you if you say you're a veteran, or whatever we're, we're war mongols and we're a whole bunch of with classification, we volunteered. Oh, that that especially with the PTSD, I think a lot of people won't hire us because they think military and they think we're crazy. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of these veterans that really need uh, an occupation after they get out of the service aren't able to get a job. And recently, BPA, you know, Bonneville Power Administration, right. wouldn't hire veterans, and there was a, a, a program to not hire mm -hmm. veterans. Well, they jumped on that. Now, I understand that they did get caught, and yeah. I'm, I'm really appreciative of the uh, people that uh, brought that to attention. Mm -hmm. And that's a good point to mention, too, by the way, uh, the fact that if you're a veteran and you're looking for a job, make sure you identify yourself on the application form that you are a veteran. And then, in fact, you may want to even ask the person that you're trying to look for a job. They just say, hey, look here, I'm a veteran. Do you happen to have any preference? Do you have any preference, some points or whatever, that will give me a little preference, if you will, recognize I'm a veteran? You get extra points for civil service, and uh, there's some other ways that uh, veterans get points. And mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. knowing all those is a very difficult thing. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. a lot, a whole, uh, whole lot of information, and knowing everything isn't going exactly. to happen very easily. You know, we have our DD-214. We know that basically. That's our resume, as far as military resume aspect of it. But don't you think, do, do we have a, another piece that, that basically transition? Uh, what you were doing in the service with what might be the op occupational skill outside the service. You know what I mean? That they can just give you in addition to. Do they do something like that? No, I think I was mentioning to you earlier, Bruce, that Microsoft now has a program where they can take what you did in the military. Say you were a gunnery sergeant. They can take whatever you did in the military and trans uh, transpose the information into civilian words and what they uh, would qualify. What you're doing in, 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 in right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, Make yeah, an right. equation. Yeah. with the military service to civilian right. employment. Yeah, Ma military occupational skills. That's basically what your job description was Correct. all about. And that's a very important piece. It'd be neat, to, it'd be neat if, if they could just issue that right off the bat when a person gets out. You got my point? I, mean, I know Microsoft is doing it, but I'm talking about for everybody for yeah. that matter. It was basically just like the DD-214. It would aid in the transition from the military to civilian very life, much which so. we're talking about. Because a lot of times people can't read the DD-214 mm -hmm. unless they've had the military background, okay? So they need that additional piece. Well, for example, in a, if you're recon, recon means you're a special soldier. Right, You've right. been through a lot of different right. things. A lot of people can't handle it. Right, it exactly. means you're a little step above right. and so forth and so on in right. the services. Right, right, right. Good point. That might be something we want to throw back on the table. Because they need that. They need something different. Because the civilians don't know. Like That's I said right. before, they don't understand what the DD-214 is all about. And they need to know. Well, folks, we've been, uh, you know, we've, we've, got, we've got the line open. I wish we'd gotten a call, at least one call. But then that shows you why we have the problem. That's why we have the problem. Because we're not communicating. We're not communicating with the vet. And and, uh, and, and I'm making it very important. Someone said, well, gee whiz, I am, Bruce. But the bottom line is that I don't need to call, blah, 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 routine. Yes, you do need to call. <laughs> There are a lot of folks who don't need to call. That's why, we, that's why it's being said that we do have a problem. And the only way you're going to solve the problem, we're going to have to start communicating about the problem aspect of it. Because in most cases, the people who are employed by the VA are civilians. They've never been in the military before. And so consequently, we're trying to get that hook up together. So we, we're, not, we're not looking at getting your job. <laughs> we, just make, we just want to make sure that we get the service. And that's the key. There's a difference between a person who actually has experienced this whole, the whole military situation and the person that's not. The, 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 our society has pretty well accommodated those who have not been in the military. So we're just trying to say, hey, look, there's an issue here so we can be talk, talking to inclusion. Yes. Is that a fair, is that a fair We need to be included. And right now, vets do not feel that they're included. 
And by the time you see them sparking up about things, you don't understand what's going down. Aspect of it. So, as a reminder, uh, just as a little, just another reminder, uh, Craig, I want you to let them know about what do they need to do to sign up and give them that phone number again. You get down to the uh, the VA and you want to talk to a veteran service officer, and the number is one eight seven seven two 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 vets, which is eight three eight seven two 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 eight three eight seven. And I got another idea. You brought the idea. When you when you see a vet when you see a vet on the corner asking for money, asking for money, tell him to pull out that card. Tell him to pull out that card and show you the card before you give him anything. Do that. And if they don't have the card, tell them to call the VA. Or better yet, why don't you just Google it on your smartphone and give them the number. And better yet, why don't you just put them in your car and take them down to the VA? Let's do it that way. We can solve the problem overnight. What do you think, Greg? Huh? I would say call us, but then all of a sudden they, they'd get nervous, wouldn't they? They wouldn't call us, <laughs> would they? But the bottom line is that, seriously, give it, consider that. Ask them for the card if they're saying they are a vet. What do you think about that? I got that out just because of our conversation. What do you think? Well, that wouldn't include the people that don't go to the VA and get the card, Bruce. No, I understand <laughs> it. But if they, that's the idea. To yeah, get them they need they to get, get the, card. the card. You want the money? For your booze, show me the card. <laughs> Fair? Well, that's a unique way of doing it, Bruce. Huh? It's real. <laughs> that's what it's all about. You want some booze, pull out your card. Fair? Okay. That's legit. Okay. I'm not trying to be facetious about the bottom line. It's a very serious thing. Get your benefits. Get your benefits. You need the service. And for those of you who are, who are just playing the game and saying you're, you're a vet and you're not a vet, that bothers me. Okay? It does bother me, too. Okay, good. Well, look, folks, it's, this has been just great. It's just been great, and uh, Craig, you, you've been really been an asset, and we really appreciate the fact that you, you serve, and thanks for serving. Appreciate Thank you, that. Bruce. And for those out there who are out there in, in, in TV land, share this with, you, with your, your, your loved ones and, and other folks that you might know. And, and if you know another veteran, uh, you can tell them about the repeat on the shows, and where you can sit down and they can look at the show that we've done to date. And we're also on YouTube. And we are on YouTube, and uh, you may want to share the fact that they can look at YouTube. All you do is just Google Oregon Voters Digest on YouTube, and you'll get the show, and you'll see Greg has a smiling face right here. And, in fact, he's got a, he's got, he's got a uh, what? service dog. Service dog. You get him over here. Let me see that. He's got a service dog, and, and, and that's kind of neat. We want to put him on there real quick. Like, come over here. Come on over here. Come on over here. Come yes. Come, come, on, come on over come. here. Come on over here. Come on over here. See him? See him? Get, get, give us a shot there on that service dog. Give us a shout on that service job there. This, this, is, this is his service job. And by the way, if you have any issue, this, this is something that the, the VA has, so, has supported Craig on, on having to, to support his situation, right? Fair? Yes. Okay, good. All right. Well, folks, take care and thank you very much. See you next week. Have a good one. Bye. All right, Bubba. Hey, you want again? He wants to hug you. Say, Bruce, I'm in the day. You want to say some more? You want to say some more?